Bompenger Planning Board meeting call to order and we all rise for a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, can we have the secretary perform a roll call attendance, please. Okay, all the board members um, should have received the, uh, yeah. the minutes from the secretary for the February 5th meeting. Mm -hmm. Make a motion um, to accept. I'll second. Okay, motion's been made and second to accept the minutes. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion carries. Okay, our first item on the agenda this evening is discussion uh, regarding DC sports renovation. Van Voris uh, with the architects for the project of Liska McCormick Van Voris. Dan Pizzarelli is the, uh, the owner. Um, we have addressed, uh, we got their letters from the consultants, h, &H CPL, Touches, uh, County Planning, and the Fire Department. And uh, last uh, Thursday, I believe, we, we submitted a letter uh, answering those questions. I think you went over some of them. Um, so. We think we've answered all those questions. They're, they're pretty uh, straightforward. They're on the revised document that's in front of you. There was a couple of comments that were brought up during the workshop. I know I couldn't speak during that workshop. That's hard for me, but I <laughs> bit my tongue and just listened, <laughs> took some notes. Um, so one of the main things was a bulk, the bulk requirement table is on the, is on the drawing now. Uh, I think you requested that. You asked about the dimension of the, um, the ropes course from the power lines, that's, that's labeled on the drawing as well, as required. Like John said, I think we've answered all his questions. Back to lighting with H&H, &H, we did, um, and that's also with the uh, Dutchess County comments as well. <clears throat> the lighting is all existing. This ropes course will end at dusk, just like you guys talked about. So the lights were not required on the ropes course uh, after dark, uh, they are existing. The uh, foot candle and uh, photometric chart is on the drawing. And I think there was a couple comments that were slightly over on some uh, uh, the foot candles. So those those are adjustable. We can adjust them. You know, just point them down a little bit further if required. We can you know adjust the photometric chart to show that. Uh, but we feel it's uh, a very minor issue. And like the county said, it's really kind of up to you at this point now. The lighting is with the lighting that was there, and uh, there's uh, arborvitae tall row of trees on the, uh, on the side on the side facing you know the property. The other side of the property, so that blocks it from the uh, from the south. So we, we feel we've met those comments. We've addressed the uh, the fire department bureau uh, letter as well, and Dan has met with them as well, and I've spoken to them this too. So we think we've uh, answered all the questions. We feel like we're in good shape, but we're here to answer your questions. If you have any additional comments, <coughs> okay. Um, All right, does any of the board members have any questions to we'll start with or? No. Everybody's been satisfied with what's? As long as the professionals are satisfied. Okay. So uh, as we talk about lighting, um, for context, I know that it's, it's all existing lighting. It is in the proximity of the proposed, I guess it's a three-story structure. A rope serial course, yes. Um, Two stories. Yeah, it's, stories. 30, it's 30, feet, 30 feet high. Um, so, the, it looks like there's two lights labeled in the proximity, um, and they're both, you know, I mean, they're flood lights, essentially. And they've got, uh, one of them looks like it has a hotspot of 25 foot candles and the other of 10. Um, yeah, yeah, that's located right in the middle of the site. So yeah. Actually the sort of angling the down. Those here, that's back in the existing, mm -hmm. basically the water boats were down in, and the metric off, so really, really not even our hopes course. That's what you're talking about. Stop. Wait, the one that you're talking about, the ones in the mini golf? Yeah, it's, that's, that's the most powerful one. It's so tall, it's got a bigger head on it. The one head is facing the bumper pool, but it's 
two heads are on the mini golf, the one is on the back side of the bumper pool. We can change that though. Yeah. So we get rotated around. Yeah, wouldn't that be good for like safety wise? Because there is still going to be a pit there. Yeah, I mean, my concern, I'm just trying to think of how it is going to play in. I want the site to be lit, but with very strong and intense lighting, you get a lot of shadows being cast by the structure that is now going to be rising up. Um, it's just hard to imagine with the existing lighting how, how it's going to play with what is being proposed and what the safest and what the simplest answer is going to be. What, what kind of lighting is it? Is it's an LED light. The the LED LEDs? lights, yes. Yeah. Not flood, they're, they look like a flood light, but they're actually mm -hmm. LED lights. And it, obviously the mini golf course has its own lights, right? So like mm -hmm. if you're walking on the mini golf course, the shadows itself are they're covered by the little lights, yeah. okay. right? You're not going to be in the that. path lights, they have path lights. At all, Okay. right? And you can't even get to around it. Like, we could block it off so you can't get around the whole thing. Because, like, there's the island that's in the middle, right? That one shows on the back side of the island. Yeah, that's one you're right? You're not going to be able to get to it mm -hmm. from the ropes course. Yeah. And you mentioned that you're not operating the ropes course after dark. What time do the, you know, what time do the other, like the, the mini golf course, how late would that be? The operating? mini golf is always open until 10, 11 o'clock at night, depending on, you know, it opens more in the summertime, obviously, and then Friday and Saturday is when, you know, it's a little later, mm -hmm. but it will be strictly 8 o'clock or 8 dusk if that ropes course is closed. Yeah. Okay. The lights will stay on because they're on a timer that shine, like, over the vulnerable pool, the three existing lights, but they're on now till 1 in the morning now just because they're safer with them on. Okay. Yeah, no, none of that's changing. Really. And the and the ropes course itself is, you know, pretty open. You know, it's yeah. just poles, so it's yeah. not like a structure that's <clears throat> causing a lot of shadows yeah. and shades. There should be nobody over there, anywhere near it, even on the shadows that it casts, right? Because the mini golf course, as you come up the island, has its own lights all the way, so that structure shouldn't even, even if it does cast a shadow, it's not, it shouldn't matter on the mini golf course. Okay. Um, how does the board feel regarding the existing lighting? I don't know how you guys feel with it. I mean, if, if you turn down, if they turn that down, the, the heads themselves to to prevent it from, you know, casting out further, I mean, I guess that would be helpful in this situation. Yeah. I mean, we could the only reason why they're up was because we used the bumper boats at night. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But now, if we're not going to use it, we can turn them down so it's just on the conference. Just to keep yeah. it down. Yeah, that's fine. We could, we could deal that with that with the building department, maybe, with the billing permit or something like that. I don't know if we need to go with a big... It would be, be a condition of the approval. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just that they would be turned down, you know, yeah, to, I mean, you could go to focus them. directly, them. right, to focus them straight down as opposed to be angled sure. out. That's all right. Does that board feel comfortable with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Definitely. All right. Okay. Like I said, we, we kind of hustled to get the, uh, the comments, uh, and we appreciate the consultants and the uh, 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 staff um, getting these comments to us in a timely fashion. We usually hand them to them as we walk up, so that was nice to get them a few days early. <laughs> so I think we've addressed them and you know, modified the site plan. Uh, accordingly. Yeah. Um, okay, let's just see what else we... Um yeah, they... Uh, did you answer the question there with the, the covering of the concrete? That was the... Yeah, we, so like uh, Malcolm, I think, I believe I said in the letter, we, we talk about it, we're putting a, a padding down in to ash turf on the, the bottom, yeah. whole bottom part of the uh, farmer boat section itself. Okay. All people, I'm not an expert, I'm not from Eclipse Engineering who's, you know, their liability stamp is on there, too, to answer your question. They designed the ropes course. They did a lot of them. Yeah, if they're, Danny knows it better, that everyone's, you know, harnessed down and touched. There's no... There's no free play up on that thing, so there's all there's all kinds of extra safety when uh, you know people are in there on that yeah. course. Are there uh, notes in the plans or, or it's on the details Eclipse drawings in the drawings? Yes, yeah, the Eclipse oh, drawings. Yeah. Like no, it. no, I meant of the the proposed astroturf and padding. Um, so I know that I you said that's what we're going to propose here. I don't know if it's the nature of the drawing itself, but we added it to the letter. If not, we could add that to that letter. Yeah, we'll need that on the plans okay, if sure. that's going to be proposed. I believe we just did on the letter. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, 
So I guess that's pretty much answered all the questions you had, Malcolm. Yeah. Okay. Is there, I mean, I think that you addressed in the letter, but just for the record, uh, outdoor PA system, is there an there existing is one? There and is none. There is none and there is no, not proposed? None. No. Okay. The guys at work will actually have walkie talkies saying, okay, Jim, send her up for whatever. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's always going to be one person on the bottom and one person on the ropes course at all times. So, like, they'll be talking back and forth, but it only, it'll be through a walkie talkie. Okay. No, I ask, it's a, it's a condition of the special permit. Um, yeah. So, we'll just need to verify. No. Okay. The answer is no. Yeah. All right. So, being this is a special use permit, um, so we have to schedule a public hearing for this. Correct. Yeah. Sorry, there was special. Yeah. So we need to schedule public hearing for this one. Yes. Yes. We have to do that. That's yeah, we're modifying it's a, the special. Yeah, it's a special use permit. That's why. So with that, um, I mean, it seems like we're pretty much at that point. It just to kind of, because um, really. I mean, I haven't seen the changes that they have made to the plans. I think that they tried yeah. to address as many of my comments as possible. Um, if we can get, um, you know, not just a note, but like a, like a detail, some description of what the padding that's being proposed is so that the building department can verify that, that, that the padding being proposed is the padding being installed. Mm -hmm. um, that will address my comments. Yeah, I think you did get a copy of this though, right? Yes, I, I just haven't had a chance to review okay. it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What does it matter for the padding? Um, the, it's being proposed, and we, they want we to see it what needs it to be on the plans as opposed to just stated in a. They want letter. that note on the drawings itself. Yeah. They want to, we're going to show detail, you know, what it is. We need to know what we're inspecting, what we're looking for. We don't have that information. Okay. Our job is to make sure that what's on the plans is what well, exists guess, in real life. But I'm just saying you're, you keep harping on the padding for it, it serves no purpose. We're just putting it there to cover the concrete. Mm -hmm. Because the the, uh, the users are actually harnessed in, so the they won't be coming in. in no. your yeah, you're not slamming anywhere. You're going to be slowly moving down to the concrete. Okay. <laughs> They'll be walking on it. Yeah. All right. I mean, if it's we'll show that note. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah I get. Um, I mean, what does everybody, what does the board members feel? What to to put to, should he put the padding? Do we feel it's a necessary? I'm going to put the padding regardless yeah. in the pool. I'm just yeah. Thinking, I mean. Just yeah, I mean, just putting a note on the plan then at that point. Yeah, right. yeah, it's really not a question of yeah. putting it in or not then. Right. It's just a matter of just putting it on the plan. Yeah. Correct. So we have, to, we have to put all this together on the plan anyway, because at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's a legal document that's going to, you know, that's going to document all the changes that you're doing to the site currently. Okay. So, you know, that way down the road, you know, if somebody changes anything, they're going to reference back to this and say, well, no, this is what was approved, not whatever's there at some point in the future, in case anything gets, you know, altered. So, um, so with, yeah, so with that, I think that we're at a point, I mean, really, I mean, it's just, he's got to update the plans themselves, mm -hmm. right, to physically put it on, but it looks like we've discussed all the items. I can get it back tomorrow. <clears throat> hmm? I'll get them back to B tomorrow. So we'll be ready. <laughs> so we'll set the, but I think we have to, I think we, I forgot, the, what would be the first opportunity for a public hearing? So that would be April 1st. April 1st, yeah. That's the soonest? It's my time to do notification, you know. If that's the soonest, I guess that's what we'll do, but we're really, we're hoping for a lot. A lot yeah, I know. We're, we're in, You think there so? There doesn't seem to be much on the Yeah, I mean, I, it's, 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 you know, one, one detail and a couple notes, definitely. Yeah. I get, I'll get so back you go tomorrow. To, so tomorrow morning you go to the office, fix yep. it all up, and then yeah. you'll be back here tomorrow by I'll, noon? I'll email them tonight to get it going on it in the morning. <laughs> I could definitely have it there tomorrow, sure. Okay. It's, it's a small detail. Yeah, very so small. If we get, yeah, if you get everything updated, I guess if everybody feels comfortable with that, sure. with it. and it's going to meet the requirement, then I think <clears throat> Thank we you. could do that. Which is the that's what the 18th, 18th. correct? Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to B. Whatever we need, we'll get it in. All right. So. Thank you. All right. So, uh, so we're going to make a motion to schedule a public hearing so for for um, March 18th. I'll second. 
Okay, motion made. Say it all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing on motion carries. Okay. All right. Could I ask a, uh, the next question? You know, the engineers and architects, we always push the envelope a little bit. What is the next steps? I mean, at that at the that public point, can we have a, how long would it take for a resolution to be prepared? And all it that could be stuff? done after that meeting, the following meeting. The we following could have the resolution. The two weeks after that the meeting? Or is there one? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that'd be, so the, the 18th would be the next meeting, and then April 1st would be the meeting after that. Okay. And then we could vote on a final resolution, okay. assuming, you know, again, say the outcome of the public hearing. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully they don't fill the room up with people. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Appreciate All right. it. Guys. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Welcome. Take care. Take care. Okay. All right. Okay. The next item on the agenda this evening is the Subin LLC subdivision. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Mike Bodendorf, Hudson Land Design Engineer for the applicant. Um, we appeared before your board back in January with a conceptual plan for this project. Um, if you remember lot two to the right, we had a septic system partially located in the town, 100 foot wetland buffer of the existing wetland on the, the parcel. Um, we were told to go do some homework, so we did. We found a better location for it. It's completely outside the wetland now. Um, that's pretty much the major change that's been since we uh, submitted a full application for this project. Um, okay. We received the uh, consultant's comments. Um, we don't have any issues with them. There's just a couple points of clarification I'd like to go over. And okay. we're just looking for the board to possibly uh, declare themselves lead, lead agency and possibly set a public hearing for the next meeting. All right, well, we did discuss that. Um, earlier, so I guess we do a coordinated review. Um, so we have to set ourselves as a lead agency. So um, at this point, I'll entertain the board uh, for a motion to have the secretary circulate for um, lead agency, Gardner Secret. So moved. Okay. So a motion's made. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I see none. Motion carries. So we'll have that circulated. Um, Just one question, Chairman. I already got a response from the health department. Okay. Does that mean that it's already been circulated? No. Sometimes, sometimes some of the local agencies, when we circulate the plans, yep. when they're submitted, they respond back with that letter, yeah. where yeah. we have no problem with you being leading. Right, so, okay. Oh, you're talking about, you, that we've oh, so you got the standard letter back, you talk about the, um, yeah. you know, that you have to go in there and submit for the septic systems right. with that. Okay, that's just how, yeah, to make sure. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it, they'll probably just give you that same letter again, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I guess it's the other issues that we gotta, you know, we're kind of looking into the, um, you know, the wetland, um, and then whatever had shown up on the mapper, I guess that needs to get addressed. So um, so with that, now it comes into question regarding public hearing. Um, so we did discuss earlier, so if we circulate, we're not gonna have probably a lot of the responses back from those agencies um, regarding some of the um, issues. So I mean, if we wait the 30 days and do it that way, would that be acceptable? Yeah. And we put this off to the to the first, and hopefully at that point we yeah, have some. that's fine. Yeah. All right. Does so everybody feel comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. At least that give some of the agencies a chance to respond with the yeah with some of the comments. Um, so with that, uh, April first is good. Yeah. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing for April the first. <clears throat> so move. Okay. Motion's made. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Um, <coughs> okay. So 
So with the with the letters themselves, the consultants' letters, you said you had questions. Just just um, uh, regarding the um, tree clearing with regards to uh, Indiana bats, is it acceptable just place restrictive notes on the plans? Um, yes, but um, we will want to get some correspondence back from DEC because you weren't just flagged for the Indiana bat. You were flagged for something I've never heard of before called the pied billed greb, yeah. which is a threatened or endangered waterfowl. Right. Um, uh, the Indiana bat we're very familiar with. Yeah. Um, but we would love to get some correspondence from the DEC about this particular waterfowl. I don't know what the mitigation if there are I, I think that's related to the to the river, but I'll I'll see what I can get. It it may just be a letter that says, yeah, you're not going to affect right. their habitat that's, mm -hmm. you know, half a mile away. You're just in yeah, the that, we do a lot of work in Beacon, and that comes up on a lot of our projects there, so I think it's just, but we'll, we'll clear that up and make sure everything's... You'll also want to reach out to um, uh, Shippo. Yeah. Uh, you're in the archaeological buffer, but right. you knew that already. You submitted those yeah. mappers. Um, so the correspondence between those two agencies, uh, forward that to the town. Um, and also reach out to uh, Army Corps about the change in drainage to the wetland uh, mm -hmm. and see if they have guidance on that. Um, I mean, all of this will also be done through the seeker review as well. So. Okay, so the change in drainage is because we're moving it over? I think it's the uh, grading and also the um, uh, the swale that you're... Uh, right, but it's not in the wetland. No, but it will change the drainage to the wetland, no? Well, the drainage is already going there. It's just it was going in in a very wide area, and now we're bringing it in through a swale mm -hmm. in a controlled manner. I'll, I don't think I'm going to get any correspondence from them. They're usually very brief, yeah. but um, some correspondence from the Army Corps would just check that off. Okay, I'll see what I can get. Thank you. Okay. All right. Other than that, I think that's all the. No, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, if I may, though, Mr. Chairman, we have an extension on the agenda tonight. Um, it's for Kimmel subdivision. Um, I, I don't know if we needed to be here for that, and I was just wondering if the board had any questions regarding that particular extension. Um, no, we kind of discussed it real quick earlier. So maybe just to... We just have easement language to finalize, and then we can give everybody final copies for final review, and we'll be done. Okay. Yeah, I think this is... Um, I don't know. Anybody want to vote on this now? Sure. So we can. Yeah. I'll make um, a motion to grant. Okay. Second. Yeah. Motion is made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion carries. All right. Thank you very much. All right. You didn't want to stay till the end of the meeting? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good night. All right. Have a good night. Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda is the Sikh Temple. Alfred Capelli, project architect for the the Sikh Temple, the new Sikh Temple. Uh, most of you are are new here, so I'm going to do a quick um, overview of uh, where we were and where we are right now. So back in 2015, we submitted an application for a 20,000 square foot uh, Sikh facility. 
The Sikh uh, community currently has a 6,500 square foot facility on Ketchum Town Road for those who don't know. Uh, they purchased this property back then to build at that time a 20,000 square foot uh, building. And what I've done for illustration purposes is to your left is what was approved back in 2018 and the reduced site plan, if you will, uh, on the right side uh, before you. Um, so due to uh, things beyond everyone's control, whether it be uh, the COVID epidemic, uh, lack of attendance, uh, uh, increased construction costs, uh, the SEEK uh, Building Committee decided that perhaps 20,000 square feet was a little bit too, too large for them. So they scrutinized uh, all of their needs and they felt that 13,500, where we are right now, is the comfortable level uh, for them to, uh, to utilize for their new building. Same components, um, there'll be a prayer hall, there'll be a dining hall, and then some um, uh, additional uh, offices, classrooms, and things of that nature. The plan pretty much stayed the same, other than being reduced uh, in size, we've illustrated. Um, a floor plan, and for those who have not seen this before, this is a rendition of what was uh, presented then, and for all intents and purposes, the length of the building is the same, so the rendition will, will hold true. This is what's being proposed at 13,500 square feet. Um, So just to uh, uh, discuss some of the items that were um, discussed at the at the workshop, uh, and just to clarify uh, a few a few items, um, and randomly, if you will, if if you beg my indulgence, I'll just uh, hit on some of these things that were discussed earlier: lighting, cumulative effects. No problem. We'll take care of whatever uh, needs to uh, be done there. The landscaping that was uh, 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 mentioned by Malcolm, um, I should uh, emphasize that in addition to the, uh, 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 what you see at the little green dots, the landscaping, the pine trees, um, we are lining those two properties, the two corners of the property there, uh, along the residential homes. There's a fence there as well, so it's not only the, uh, it's not only the. Uh, there's a uh, six foot high uh, fence that, after uh, exhaustive meetings that I had, uh, coffee clutching with the neighbors up there to try to satisfy their needs, their concerns. An open field that's been here forever now is going to have an edifice that they were concerned about. So we, we, we discussed uh, the, the extensive landscaping and that six foot high stockade fence going the, the two sides along the residential property for their purposes. Um, to touch upon the uh, parking, the original concept, as you can see to your left there, believe it or not, had 148 spaces. Um, we had a lot of overage there. A lot of overage for, uh, as in many churches, Sundays uh, don't get a lot of activity anymore for whatever reason. But, but certainly on certain high holy days and for weddings and things of that nature, um, originally the, the community had thought that they wanted to accommodate um, um, uh, much more parking than perhaps they needed. And that comes on the heel of their, uh, of, of their existing facility uh, on uh, Ketchum Town Road, which is, which is uh, lacking tremendously in parking. Um, this iteration of the reduced size building has, as, uh, as, as Malcolm had, had mentioned, we require 63 spaces only. We provided 72, which I didn't think was that great of a jump as far as giving a few more spaces, so to speak. Um, but be that as may, uh, we can, you know, we can discuss that. Uh, we can land bank it, we can do whatever. 
Um, the electric charging stations, we are remiss. We talked about it and never found its way onto the site plan, but it will uh, in the next coming uh, uh, iteration. The circular drive there uh, is a ceremonial. The, 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 um, it's not so much for the uh, driveway aspect of it. Um, uh, there's a flag in the center, and again, there are activities that, that go on around the flag, so it's more ceremonial, and I can speak to my client about uh, maybe not having blacktop, maybe doing pavers, porous pavers, whatever the case might be, but we prefer not to get rid of that uh, circular drive or that element where it's illustrated on our final site plan, but we can talk about that. The wetlands, now mind you, Malcolm's never been to the site, a lot of you guys haven't been to the site. So we're talking about, we're way uphill here. And believe it or not, this little dark green area is a wetlands. That wetlands historically was a, um, was like a little watering hole for the farmer years and years ago to, uh, for his cattle, to his cows to drink out of, believe it or not. How it got to be a wetlands is beyond me because it's on top of the hill. But be that as it may, it's a designated wetland. We addressed it back then. Um, it's a local wetland. And the buffer notwithstanding, um, we'll have to talk about it because we really don't want to move the building. The parking we can talk about. Um, and, uh, and we'll just leave it there for now. Um, the SWIP, not a problem. Whatever uh, uh, you know, concerns or issues that John may have on the SWIP, that'll all get worked out. That's not a problem. The Dutchess County Health Department, of course, they reviewed this um, however many years ago. Um, and they'll uh, have the opportunity to re-review it again. And just to give a little further background, when we started this project, there was no central services here, no central water or sewer. We were designing well and septic for this. And the C community uh, you know, kept on talking to the town attorney, the town supervisor at the time. Is there a way that we can annex ourselves because we were out of the district? And over time, um, the, the town agreed uh, the C community paid an influx of money to buy into the system, and that's how we are currently uh, in the water and the sewer district. Um, so we're gonna use that water for potable purposes, but also the building's gonna be sprinklered. So, we, you know, that really is one of the things that, that, that drove trying to get at least the water there. Um, the um, two driveways. Um, it was, um, I don't know how that came to be, if it was the architect's design that it was a good design practice on this um, corner property with the traffic being generated, that in fact uh, two driveways was the way to go to disperse traffic. Uh, there, there has been recent discussion with the C community to eliminate the All Angels driveway, having conversations um, uh, with, uh, with Mr. Prager, the local um, uh, a fire marshal here, uh, and he re he's, on the, he's a fireman up at New Hackensack. Part of the conversation was, hey Al, you know, we're gonna be coming from New Hackensack and we're gonna be shooting into that driveway on All Angels Hill Road where another fire company may uh, come down Old Hopewell to fight a fire or emergency vehicles and, and perhaps not having to go through the intersection. So as much as it's costing money for us to put that two, two driveways there, my opinion, it's good, it's good for safety and it's uh, a good design practice, in my opinion. The traffic study that we submitted uh, uh, when we got our original approval reflects the, uh, the two entrances. It did go through the uh, Dutchess County Department of Public Works. They conditionally approved it, didn't issue any permits because we didn't have a contract or a record, but that's already, I don't want to say signed, sealed, and delivered, and you probably have that documentation uh, uh, in the file. Um, 
Other than that, I think um, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, and you know whatever we need to do to uh, to take care of the you know uh, the consultants' concerns with with lighting and or drainage or whatever we understand and you know we don't want to reinvent the wheel here. We're making it smaller, impact is smaller, but I understand that the review has to go through the process, and uh, we'll make try to make everybody happy. Any questions? I had a question. You pointed to the dark green area as the wetland. I was under the impression that the, the dotted line area, the top right of the building, was the wetland, not the dark green. Oh, I'm sorry. You yeah, have ponds way up right to the back. Back right hand corner. Yeah. yeah. This one and in the other picture. You're absolutely right. That small dark depression I pointed to, to my mistake, that's a little retention, detention, uh, drainage uh, okay. pond that the engineer came up with whatever he needed to do to disperse storm water. You're absolutely right, Tom. My apologies. Okay. All right. Um, any of the board members have any questions regarding this? Yeah. No? no? Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you had other qu other questions regarding uh, yeah, I had a number of thoughts in, in response to, to what you had brought up. Um, I think the, f the first one would be um, the, the parking area. I mean, I understand um, wanting to keep the, the roundabout, particularly for ceremonial purposes. I think if we can um, redesign the parking area a little bit and draw it out so that it's less of a uh, traffic circle for cars and more of sort of a, I mean, it can, it can still be designed to take the load of a vehicle, but I would, I would mark it differently. I would have it even be a different color of paver, um, for, for pedestrians, right? And bring that out so that people are less likely to, uh, get drawn onto it. Um, I would also, there's two two-way entrances into the parking area and then one one-way entrance into the parking area. Mm -hmm. I would get rid of the one-way and have the two-way entrances on either end and then you will have fewer cars entering or I guess fewer cars driving in front of the temple and also you eliminate the concern of people accidentally exiting that way. Um, and I guess just in, in some way pulling that circle or, or or visibly making that circle separate from the parking area. And um, I think that would do a lot for uh, pedestrian and vehicle safety of, of the area. I mean, it's clear <coughs> from the previous approvals, which I had not seen, it makes a lot more sense there. But now that we're moving towards this design, um, I think that there are changes to be made there. You're not suggesting that we, ha we eliminate the driveway in front and incorporate that into the parking lot? We want to maintain that separate driveway that goes through the spine of the driveway going through yes, and then turn yes. off into no, the driveway. Right. Okay. The, it's the one-way entrance into That's the fine. Driveway. That's fine. We'll look at that. That's, yeah. that's, that's, um, that is what I would look at. That's perfectly agreeable. Um, and that way the only, you know, then everything is sort of focused to the pedestrian connection from that circle to the entrance. Sure. Um, and you have fewer cars moving through that area. Um, for that one way, are you thinking pavers might work there as well? It could. I would just get rid of it and create a pedestrian throughway connecting from the parking lot to... And we may in fact do that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that would make for a better design um, and a safer one. Um, I know that the county brought up uh, the two curb cuts and hearing the history about it. I, I defer to the board knowing that there was a traffic study prepared based on two curb cuts. Yeah, but how old is that traffic study? That's a good question. 2015, 16, 17? Yeah, that needs okay. to be changed. Yeah, that needs to be new. Yes, and we can update that. I think that it would, you would just need to update it with current numbers because the number of congregants would be reduced significantly. So I think that taking that previous plan and updating it for yep. secret purposes would be relatively simple. Yeah, um, that inter intersection there flows differently too now. 
It does. Because they added a couple lanes in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That intersection. The county we'll and we'll definitely need it to be up there. So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, what does the board think about the two curb cuts? Because that is a pretty big design feature. Um, uh, there are there are typical red flags associated with multiple curb cuts. I think that they're not so red in this particular instance, but um, we generally recommend fewer curb cuts. But I, I don't think that it is as a big of an issue given the geography of the site and how far away both of those are from they the are corner. Spread apart. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind those curb cuts because I think it'll get people in and out quicker too because they're on separate roads like that. It's not yeah. like and break up the traffic generation. Yeah. Yeah. And fire fire is going to limit yeah. the. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. it's a good idea for safety. And I did discuss it with our with a, when when the building committee suggested eliminating it since we are smaller and the cost uh, in, involved in that uh, and speaking with uh, Phil Greeley, um, he was kind of, Al, I can do the traffic study with the one entrance. He, off the top of his head, he felt he was on the threshold there of suggesting that, oh boy, I hope we don't need any turning lanes on the newly paved, not that it made any difference, on the old Hopo Road anyway. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I just says not, we'll wait to see when we come here. We decided we wanted to keep the two, and with the fire, speaking to Howard, the two access ways, I think that's the way to go. And if I remember correctly, the All Angels entrance may be a limited access, so it may be right in, right out. It may not be a left-hand turn out on uh, All Angels. Yeah. I don't remember, but I, I, uh, I'd have to look that up. So on the old uh, old Hopewell is is full is full movement, but. Uh, um, the next point that I wanted to discuss with the board, um, there is a proposed disturbance to the wetland buffer. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like the previously approved plans had considerably more disturbance in the wetland buffer and that that disturbance has been reduced. Um, it also looks like there's landscaping through the wetland but hearing the history of the wetland, it sounds like it is a very isolated and low functioning, it's a wet spot in the field. I'm, I'm not so sure, and I should have probably went up there on a day like today. There may not even be any water in there. Yeah. yeah. Was, there, I do, I, was yeah. there a wetland report prepared oh, the previous? Yes, yes. Yeah. You have that in, the, in your documentation. Okay. Yes. Um, so the applicant sounds um, fond of the location of the building. I think that with small revisions to that, uh, one of the two smaller parking areas, you could also eliminate that disturbance to the wetland buffer, but it's also a very minor disturbance to the wetland buffer, and I would defer to the board on that because there's a lot of other disturbances to that particular wetland buffer. So. Yeah. Well, uh, if I can throw another monkey wrench in to, that further complicates things, which doesn't reflect on this particular plan. Uh, um, again, speaking, we got a memo from the fire department. They wanted to shift around a couple of fire hydrants, add a couple of additional fire hydrants. They wanted access around the building. So I kind of agreed upon putting a, at least a gravel or maybe um, some sort of pavers to take a, a fire apparatus around the building. If you can't connect it, Al, okay, but at least give us something to the back of the building, which is already in the works, and I already agreed to it. So that's may or may not complicate that wetlands yeah. encroachment even more. Go up through the, you know, the loading zone? Um, I, I guess we could, and Troy is looking, actually I would like to circumnavigate the whole building, to be honest with you. I'd like to have that temporary, whatever we do, loop all the way around. Uh, at least that was my uh, mm -hmm. dumb architect's intent, is to just loop all the way around, connect the loading area, so to speak. Uh, which that's outside the kitchen and the other. So, so that's what I would. So you'll see that next time. But I don't okay. want to shock anybody with what's that new thing. We'll have the conversation about wetland disturbance when sure. you revise the parking, exactly, and the site circulation, exactly. Um, uh, another comment that was brought up. I mean, it sounds like you had lengthy discussion as to landscaping and screening mm -hmm. on the back of the property. Um, the county brought up uh, the 
in their comment memo the species that were being proposed and also uh, suggested, I guess, diversifying the, the hedge in the back and incorporating uh, particularly lower things. But there's also going to be a fence there. Um, right, you said that the fence is proposed. It's not existing? Oh, it's not existing. No, that's yeah. proposed. I, I, and on the detail sheets, it's, it's, like a six it's, foot it's on there. Six-foot white vinyl fence. That's okay. correct. Yeah. Bing, 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 bing. I thought we had selected actually uh, the type of trees that, again, uh, not the same type of trees. I, I thought there were three or four different species there, you know, not, you know, deer resistant, et cetera, et cetera. We'll take another look at it. Uh, yeah, take a, the by county all, by all means. common letter is, is pretty specific sure. when they talk about landscaping. Take sure. a look at that, see if it changes. Not what the species that you would propose are. Not a problem. If there's going to be a six foot vinyl fence, enhancements to that landscaping would just be for the applicants. Sake. Sure. They're, the neighbors aren't going to see it. So um, I think that that's a relatively moot point. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. John, do you have anything? No, I, I, I believe they uh, mentioned the, the main concerns that we had. Um, including the revisions to the SWIP that was approved previously. So um, everything else is just standard housekeeping items, getting your outside regulatory approvals. And uh, it sounds like you've had some Good discussions with the, the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, we talked briefly about lighting. Um, it sounds like you're going to revise the site layout to a certain extent, which will probably change the lighting plan. Sure. Um, in that conversation, I just wanted to mention um, include the the proposed pole height. That's I took a note of that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Um, the specs of the lights appear good otherwise just mm -hmm. verify uh, 15 feet is usually the, the max that we work with mm -hmm. um, and if we can get a detailed like a like a foot candle photometric plan not a problem um, but obviously you know wait until you you, you may want to wait to do that until you have a site layout that you sure. are happy moving forward with because there are a couple of different considerations that would change um, how you want to lay out the site Okay. You guys have any questions, comments? Um, no, he was just looking at um, that. Uh, that building is actually hitting the buffer, right? Yeah. 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 I think I. Yeah. The, no, I get it. I get it. Yeah, it's a matter of <coughs> reviewing up the report too, because yeah. that report was um, old. Well, now that it's old, it's going to be the same, and it's going to be less of an impact today. I mean, I know what, I remember that being a, a long discussion. I believe that was, um, you know, I believe David Stolman was here then when we were dealing with that, because I remember that pond. Because again, it's, you know, Al said it was a, you know, it was basically used for, you know, the farm at the time. Yeah. It was just something that was kind of left behind. Um, because basically the building's in the same position it was back then, so we approved it based upon the information it was given to us at the time. Yeah, there's more of it in the buffer at the time. I mean, it was yeah, a right, building. there's more, right. They're lessening the amount of the buffer. buffer today, so I mean, yeah. Did you guys yeah. ever go out and look at it? Um, yeah, well, well, actually, I don't think anybody went as a group. I, I know I went up there, because I went up there and walked the property. I mean, it really wasn't a lot of, it wasn't really anything there. Again, like I said, this was basically a, um, for a period of time they were farming. You know, they were farming this. They were you know growing corn on the property. Yeah, yeah, I, <clears throat> I think I went up there. I think everything was you know it was just basically everything was cut down at that point in the fall. And that was Nick Cole, Bud Cole. I don't know if you yeah, guys are also there. The too. So Bud Cole, mm -hmm. old timer, passed away. His grandson is the one that uh, contracted with the uh, with the property owners to uh, to farm it. Um, I don't know how they came to be, but they farmed it for a couple of years, and I believe he got ill, he went elsewhere, or whatever the case yeah. might be. That's why it's laying fallow uh, right now. But it is, or there is no trees on the on the site. I don't know. Uh, there may have been a couple, you know, on the north side there at one time, but 
Yeah. Empty lot. Totally empty. 16.5 acres, if I didn't say that before. Okay. So, I mean, the big, the big key to this, I guess, Malcolm, is you want to see that, you want to review that wetland report, I guess, again. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know we probably had it somewhere. Um, I guess but you could find it and, I guess, circulate it to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you uh, okay, if you don't have it, I can, I think you have it, but whatever you need, if it has to be amended, not a problem, we'll work on that okay. modification to the parking. Uh, if we can, maybe directly with Malcolm, our engineer, work something out so the next time we came, we, and we're not going back and forth on the same issue again, and then we can tighten everything up. Uh, so. I mean, yeah, at the same time, I guess you need to have, <clears throat> I mean, everybody's okay. I mean, the board out of the board members, everybody's okay with two entrances, or yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So just leave it as such. Yeah, now leave it up to the congregation if they want to get rid of it for some reason. One of those, it's it's their choice. But um, and then the the parking, I guess, is you know working that out. And you think that the the number seventy three, they'll be they'll be comfortable with that number. Right now, 72. Um, There's 72, sorry. 72. Yeah. And then, actually, there were discussions that, hey, you know, if you are providing that driveway behind the building, maybe we can not take the whole area, the whole gravel driveway, park on the side or something like that for yeah. overflow. But right now, they're comfortable with 72. So. Okay. I mean, it's, it's up to as long as they, they feel they're comfortable. It seems you're, <clears throat> you're above the minimum requirement, so... And, and we can we can suggest uh, um, an area for future parking, which I think we did originally, um, which we didn't do uh, in this iteration. But originally we had uh, uh, some future parking, which which again allows us the possibility that uh, you know maybe they can do something there. Okay. Good. All right. Um. Yeah, so I mean, if so, if that goes back with the, the land banking. So, if let's say they did land bank parking, the analysis for the stormwater is going to be including that that as well for land banking. Yeah. Just to make it, John, it's just simple, just as if they were to land bank parking, let's say for future, in case yeah. they, you know, um, they end up with a lot of overflow, you know. Um, they end up, you know, doing well on a lot of members, you know, they get a lot more members and they need that additional parking and they decide to put it on the plan as a land, as land bank parking. Would they need to put that on to show that as part of the SWIP as well yeah, that, for the, the stormwater? Be because for future, yeah. that way they wouldn't have to make a trip back again for something. Right. Could, could okay. just bank what's on the original plan. Yeah, we, 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 we would do that. Yeah, we yeah would do okay, because I'm just saying, if you're going to go through all this right now, you might as that well makes do sense. that. Absolutely. That way it just it simplifies things for the future. Yeah, it shouldn't be an issue for them because of the decrease in impervious overall. So um, to include that now would, would make sense. Okay, yeah. All right. Um, okay. Anybody else is good with this, son? Good. All right. And it's just we'll yeah, tidy things up. We'll submit it whenever we get to that point, and then we'll we'll see you whatever you know, and so yeah. then we'll move from there. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's one of those things too where we um, I guess it's an amended site plan. So I don't know. If, I don't know if do we have to have a public hearing for this one? We should. Yeah. With an amendment. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. But so at that point, get everything together, and then I guess we'll have to. To another dog and I'm, pony ho I'm hoping it's nowhere yes. near what it was the last time. Yeah, that's that's fine. We'll yeah. We'll do whatever we need to do. Okay. Thank you very much. All, All right. right thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. You're welcome. welcome. Have a good evening. Good night. Mr. Chair, let the record reflect that I'm recused on the next item that's coming up. Okay. Next item on the agenda we have is a site plan and special use permit for Heidemann's Caretaker Cottage. Uh, good evening, board. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Sarah Ryan, Vandewater and Vandewater. On behalf of the applicant, Michelle Marie Heinemann. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, the legalization of an existing structure on the site. 
uh, to become a code compliant caretaker's cottage. Uh, the structure itself uh, has been there since the early 2000s. Um, Ms. Heineman purchased the property in 1998 uh, um, and it was built without permits. Uh, it is right now uh, constructed as three tiny homes pushed together. Uh, the plan is to remove all the internal uh, division uh, to create one caretaker's cottage. Uh, it is also currently uh, undersized. There is going to be a slight expansion to make it comply with the minimum square footage required by the code. Okay, so they will be so they will be adding to this then. Very slightly. Slightly. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes, it will not increase the uh, footprint much. Um, I believe that there's an existing deck that's going to be expanded upon. Okay. All right. Um, all right. The, um, let's open it for any questions from the board first. Anybody have any comments before I turn it over to the I staff? No. Nope. Okay. All right. So I'll start out with the with the planner, or if you want to go, can I go through a couple of comments you had? So the, uh, the, the simplest is uh, a correction to the application form. Um, the zoning district should be listed as R80. Okay. Um, and then um, uh, looks like a type two action um, for our review. So that would conclude seeker. And then the only thing left would be um, the special permit condition Section 24061C, um, each structure shall be placed in a manner that will allow a future subdivision based upon compliance with the current zoning regulations. It looks like everything is in place to do that. We would just need to modify it to to show hypothetical subdivisions. Sub X, things yeah. like that, okay. And that would be, uh, I guess, in addition to the, the bulk table, right? Yep and show like a hypothetical lot with its setback requirements and a hypothetical uh, bulk table for that lot. Okay. All right. Uh, there was uh, an undocumented septic on the site. It was there uh, when the client purchased the property. Um, Amy, if you'd like to speak to that, we have had some discussion with the uh, health I think the septic actually entered a failure state and there has been soil testing and a new design done that's been submitted or is in the mail to be submitted to the health department now. It was witnessed by Dan Keeler, the soil testing. Okay. So it will have its own septic that's up to current standards. Okay. The, um, okay, so the health department eventually will weigh in on the, on the approval for that. Correct, yeah. they've been involved in. Okay. Um, is that shown on the current plan? Uh, it's not. Okay. It, it is close to the, the house where the existing cesspool was. Um, I actually don't know where they're proposing it, but it's going to be within the same general location. Okay, so that and the additions that were discussed, um, just make sure that they're clearly no. pointed out on the plan. and. If there's any grading necessary or we can control, please add that to the plan as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, Judith, I know we discussed uh, the second curb cut, the driveway coming in on Dogwood Hill Road. Um, I did look at the county historical GIS. Uh, that curb cut had been existing since 1980, so well before the client purchased the property. Uh, the code changed uh, for residential properties in 2020, so uh, I respectfully submit that it's grandfathered in. It would also serve to be the driveway of the caretaker's cottage in the event of a subdivision. In the event of what? In the event of a subdivision, it would serve as a, a driveway for, you know, the caretaker's cottage. Right, so that would be yeah, so that would be the access to that one parcel, as opposed to the 376 entrance being the, to the main house. Yeah. Okay. That driveway is not currently recognized by 911, despite it being on there since 1980. Well, if it's one parcel, it gets one driveway, right? Correct. 
Well, there is a main driveway on 376 as well. Yeah, but with the second one, it'd either be subdivide it or get rid of one, right? Right. There's no current plan to subdivide at this time, uh, so the whole property would still be on the 376 address. But the property, but both both structures have 911 address numbers. Uh, no, not currently. Okay. Uh, it would be a secondary structure to the primary right, structure. Right, being accessory. Oh, correct. Yeah, accessory to, but being that it is a dwelling, I guess it's going to need a separate 911 address. I would have to look into that. I can't speak to yeah, that this okay. time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I it mean, probably like at some point prior to it getting a CO, yeah. it's definitely going to need that. I mean, if accessory apartments also need separate 911 addresses. Then right, right, right. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. So this would be a caretaker's cottage, not an accessory apartment. Correct. Because right now an accessory apartment has to be attached to the main. Correct. So this would be something totally different. Yes. Yeah. And right now this address is hyphenated. It's known as 1109-111. So we need to clarify that as to how that would be identified. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I believe it's always been known as that. That's how the county recognizes it as well. Right. On their it is searches. an illegal structure, so I'm not sure how they will, but it has to be into the 376 address. At this time, I don't think we should consider it up to, as a dog would Yeah, help. they just, yeah, it yeah, sounds like if, yeah, if it's a, address. right, they're not changing anything, but it's, at least as long as the county knows that it's a, you know, it's a separate, it's a, technically it's a separate dwelling. You know, if somebody else is living there and they pick up the phone, you know, and they're, they have an emergency, you want to be able to go to the, you know, to the right one. You don't want to go knocking on the door to the, you know, to the big house and there's nobody there and, you know, right. the emergency is actually in the, uh, you know, in the, in the caretaker's cottage. So, yeah. So, it's not just, I mean, just follow, I mean, you just got to follow up with the county. They'll, they could probably clarify that with you. Sure. Um, So I guess moving forward, I, mean, I guess really at this point, um, as we were discussing earlier, I guess this is going to need a, um, I guess going to need to have a public hearing yes. regarding, um, regarding what's being proposed. So at this point, I'm going to say, I don't know, we'll be, we're probably looking at what, the April 1st would be ideal, but. Okay. We have plenty. Of, we have, there's really nothing on B for the for the April first meeting at this point. <coughs> well, would we, would we have to get that driveway thing figured out first or no? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the other driveway, I mean, basically comes into the to the highway superintendent's purview, All right? The, the curb cut issue. Yeah. I mean, is, nothing, is, there, is there anything in the zoning that says they can't have that second driveway? Yes. A residential area can only have one curb cut. Yeah. Yes. Like so it that, one. It's, it's been there since before that was yeah. adopted. As that code was enacted in 2020. So. Okay. It's a pre-existing though. Right, but it's pre-existing from back whenever. From like 1920, yeah. Right. From, from long, long before Wapen Dre had a zoning code. There was a trailer on there originally, so I'm not sure how that, I could look into the records to see how that came into play. So that trailer was removed, but I don't rec you know, remember that it had. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's not like a traffic impact issue. Yeah, you know, okay. that's what I'm saying. It's like. <laughs> uh, it connects to the end of the cold is that? Right. Yeah. yeah. So be it. Yeah. Yeah, so everybody's okay with it? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, if they, if the highway superintendent's fine with it, I guess at this point, right? Is it, or does it need to be? I mean, would it need to be blocked off? Well, keeping with the code as we're calling it out, we are making people remove when there's more than one curb cut. This is a little bit different, so. Right, that it's being pre-existing. Uh, additionally, uh, Ms. Heineman did obtain variances for fencing that's going to uh, circumnavigate the property. 
and as well as for a gate on that back entrance. <clears throat> sure, he has a variance for it. Yes, we obtained them last year. Okay. I mean, if nobody has, if none of the board members have an issue with it, no. Go. All right. Everybody's okay with it. Um, to leave it there would be, I mean, again, it's been there for many years, so. Yes, if we could just um, leave it. But I guess at, at the point of the hypothetical subdivision, would we want that to be the primary access to one lot and then the other one be the primary access to the other lot? That would make sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be the easiest course. It's a hypothetical subdivision, so we don't really need to have Right. So um, if so, if we don't need to have a driveway on the plans necessarily, we just need to show right. that that structure would comply with the setback requirements. If at the time of a future subdivision they wanted to grade down and connect to uh, the same road as as the primary entrance, they could do that too. And at that time, yeah. they would probably have to get. But I guess it kind of yeah. But I guess you do it that way. It kind of justifies having it out at that cul-de-sac at that point. I mean, it's it's up to you how you want to, to draw out that particular subdivision. I think there's a lot of ways to make it work, but it already has a hypothetical driveway, so. Now that piece would have, that would have to sit on its own five acre lot then, right? Uh, no, I believe the- It's our 80s. No, it's yes. 80, so 80, It's about a little feet. under two acres. Yeah. Yeah. 80? Yeah, yeah, so it's less than two acres, just under two acres of property for each lot in that zone. <clears throat> yeah, I believe it's 1.87. Yeah. Looks like the, huh? I thought our 80 was five acres. No, no I 80, think that's 80, 3A or 5A. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, our 80 is 80,000 square feet. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, so if that's it's not... No? Um, All right, so if that's not an issue, I guess we can move... Um, Go back to the um, the question regarding the public hearing. So, do we want to set the uh, public hearing for April first? What? Else? There's not a lot on the agenda then, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's two things on there for the first. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now would be yeah. So if we were yeah, we April won't get a lot. April first is good. Okay. I entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing for April the first for this project. So move. I'll second. Okay. Motion is made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, Thank you. Okay. item on the agenda this evening is Joey Estates. Hi, Amy Bombardieri from Payne's Dacosa for Joey Estates. Um, I, the engineering letter that I received was from the previous submission. Yeah. So the planner's letter, I can go through that. Um, everything seemed pretty self-explanatory except for it is 77 proposed single family yep. units. Uh, there's three parcels that two wetland parcels that'll be in a conservation easement okay. and then one proposed water treatment parcel okay uh, there's a comment about the canopy uh, the uh, bridge over the uh, wetland and yeah. blocking sunlight the natural canopy of the trees probably blocks more sunlight than the bridge would we could put a reticuline grade in we could do all kinds of things plus it would clear out additional um, the span would be clearer than it is now um, so I don't see how that would cause disturbance yeah, well, I mean, I think the biggest problem is is just the fact that the bridge itself. Everybody's kind of been talking about this from, you know, the previous meetings. I mean, the, you know, again, I get this is just a, you know, it's, a, it's supposed to be just a concept, but, you know, it's supposed to be a realistic concept. You know, the property, 
you know, if this was a, a viable piece of property to subdivide into a lot of lots, it would have been done years ago. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's, the property does have a lot of faults, you know. It does have, you know, steep slopes. It does have, you know, some wetlands, you know, and things like that. So, I mean, realistically, you know, even to build, you know, all 77 lots as a conventional subdivision, yeah, you, know, you have to agree that it, it would be extremely expensive to build this. It you would know, be. Just to get, just for site work itself, you know, not including the bridge. So, I mean, you know, but we're not, we're not looking at that as a whole. I think it's just everybody's kind of, their concern is, you know, that the, you know, they discussed, we discussed the bridge, you know, the, the town wouldn't accept a bridge at the end of the day. If we were actually doing a, an actual subdivision, they're just not going to accept it due to the cost of maintenance and everything else that's involved with it, you know, just to, you know, access 10 lots. It's just a, it's a burden on the, you know, on the roadway budget, um, you know, going forward, you know, when that needs to be maintained, when it needs to be replaced, it's just sure. a lot of, it's a, it's a big piece of infrastructure. However, it's just mm -hmm. a concept. I understand. And that section of the code doesn't require that the town accept the road or the section of the code doesn't stipulate any of that. So right. the bridge being there, we don't want to build the bridge. We want to do more of a layout like the lower part where the impact right. is much less. Yeah, yeah but, I, you know, and, and now at this point, because you're kind of, you know, kind of alluding to the fact that it is a, you know, that there is a lot of infrastructure that's got to go into this. There is, yeah. and we don't, yeah. we don't, we would prefer to keep the cost of the homes lower and not put any of this infrastructure yeah. in from here over and keep it a small footprint that would be less environmentally impactful. But the section of the code doesn't dictate that it be affordable or it be accepted by the town as ownership of the, the road. So right. saying that the bridge would be too expensive to build, probably you're right. Right. Agree, it, but yeah. But again, that this it equates out to 10 more lots that probably wouldn't have, you know, that probably would never be there if this was a conceptual you know, plan, or not a, I'm sorry, not a conceptual plan, but a, you know, an actual plan. You know, if this was an actual plan to be built out, you know, those 10 lots, you know, wouldn't even be brought to the table because of the cost. So again, we're only asking for a lot count to go yep. to the town board with to, to rep. Right. So through the planning process, the normal subdivision process, lots may fall out no matter what. Correct. They would. So they would. whatever and number we go to the town board with, we can't exceed that, but chances of us getting there may be low. All right. Um, let the, some of the other guys speak on regard to this. I mean, what is everybody else's feeling with this? Can I, can I just finish through the letter? One more thing. Yeah, um, go ahead. There was a comment about the EAF being um, updated. I made a submission in January, and then I added a supplemental submission. The January submission um, did include updates to the EAF. The February supplemental submission just added a connection to Smithtown Road. So that wouldn't have changed anything on the EAF. Okay. So the That's EAF that you have is the... most up to date. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah, but I was looking at conceptual or not, it's just gotta be a feasible lot count. I just gotta be realistic. Yeah. Really yeah, you gotta net out those eleven lots that are on the bridge side. And anything else that would be a wetland now, right? And that'll put us at like 66, right? Yeah, if those weren't there, that makes it a 66 mm -hmm. lot subdivision at that point. Anybody on the other side here? Let's do Explain, the bridge is not there. What, could they just put a road to it? Or they can't no, there'd be no, no, no access right. to that. Cause Cause it's it's a, because because it's locked a lot in by wetlands. Right. Yeah. So the only way to get through a wetland is to go over it. Yeah. But then the town would have to take control of that bridge afterward. It means well, we'd town, have to. She points out the town does not have to accept the road. Yeah, I mean they could right. keep it in a homeowners right. association. Not accepting it. Right. That that's no, true. That's point, true too. Yeah. The, the town board does not have to accept dedication right. of the road. Correct. It could be a yeah. private road. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody else? Or anything? Well, I, I mean, I still believe that the construction of the bridge would require a wetland permit, um, right. a town wetland disturbance permit to construct the bridge. Because of the sunlight? 
Yes. I mean, for many reasons, but the simplest, I mean, okay. The sunlight is, If you build a, a dome over the entirety of that wetland and none of the foundations of that dome touch the wetland, would you be disturbing the wetland? No. If you don't disturb the better the banks, you don't disturb the wetland. I think in the town wetland code, it, you would be. All right, the sunlight, is, it, that's a little bit of a stretch. I mean, the canopy over the wetland right now is probably blocking out 90% of the sunlight. On As opposed to the 100% that would be blocked out by the road? It, it's going to be a reticuline bridge. It's going to be graded. The natural occurrences are a little different than a man-made object. Yeah, but so the argument, mm, yeah. the sunlight argument is a stretch, come on. The bridge is a stretch. And I think that you would need a wetland permit to construct it. That's, that's my opinion. No, no, no. I mean, obviously, that's got to be, yeah. I mean, that would have to be if you're disturbing, the, you know, the, or, you know, at least the wetland, uh, the disturbance permit and the buffer. You're going to have to have it at least that. I don't know what the distance is actually the width of the wetland itself, but to go through it, you need the permit anyway. Well, what she's representing is that if she yeah. constructs the foundations for the bridge outside of the wetland buffer right. and spans it, and they drop the bridge in place, mm -hmm that they would not be disturbing the wetland in any way. And it's possible that the Army Corps or the DEC, yeah. that that might be true there, but I don't think that that would be true under the town wetland code. Yeah. Yeah. And I really, think that that enterprise, the construction of that bridge, as I've described, or as you've described, would constitute a disturbance to the wetland and require a wetland disturbance permit. And I mean, really, you're supposed to, when you're doing a lot count on something like that, you're supposed to net out the steep slopes and steep slopes and everything. They are netted out. Yeah. It is. We okay. could, uh, mathematically, I think we could get 123 lots with everything netted out. So the 77 that we're proposing is taking a lot into consideration. And the steep slope disturbance <laughs> Potentially would be ten acre, nine and a half acres in this scenario. I'm good with the 66. Met out the bridge. The Can bridge you show is, me? Yeah, I agree. The bridge Can you show is me where the bridge is on your map? It's right here. And which are the lots that wouldn't? These. So these. Everything going along that road. Does that road come out somewhere? Or that, that's an oil, also a cul-de-sac. What was that? That's a cul-de-sac? Here. To, yeah. to your left there? Yep. But then, so this connects now to Smithtown, and these two lots get access off of Cedar Hill directly. But with that cul-de-sac There's cul -de -sac no other is, way to access that. Yeah, and we're actually supposed to be discouraging the cul-de-sac thing now anyway and having everything connected you do with have, projects like this. You do have frontage down on Cedar Hill through those 11 lots. Is that a possibility when you looked at Smithtown? Was Through here? Yeah. Uh, there's not much. I don't have, don't have I don't think I have a team. wide enough road. I mean, maybe a shared driveway, but, but not. so maybe two more lots, two or three more lots coming in off of here and avoiding. And that's the, you'd come down off the mountain. Uh, that would be the other concern is that yeah, it's, any it, grading it's, would have to stay on the property. Right. To get a road through there. I think a road would be a stretch. A shared driveway is a possibility, but I don't think there's enough frontage there. And there is, there's a small wet spot. I don't know. I mean, it's so small, and we're not going anywhere near it, so I didn't have anybody flag it or look at it, but. But that would be an issue, yeah. So. Put a road through there, or a driveway through there. Okay. Okay. Well, that's the question. We're looking for uh, a lot count that, depending on the approval of the bridge, would be 77 or 66. That's Red, residential lots. Correct. But again, so the layout down there, those are two-story buildings with 77 total units, two-bedroom units, townhouses or condos. Right. So that's the actual footprint we'd like to build. You know, we don't want to do all of this disturbance. Yeah, no, no, I understand that. That's I'm just that I just makes that yeah. And, and again, I get you know the you know the clustering makes sense you know for other reasons. Right. Um, 
you know, it's just a matter of, you know, just what is, what's, what's the actual reasonable number, I think is what the board, you know, has had, you know, discussion on. But those are, you said six units in each? That's 20, 20, 22 buildings, so it would be, um, it's three and four units, three or four units in each, so. So some would be second floor only? Would they be up and down? There are two, there are two story buildings. That also helps cut down on the, the footprint of the development. Mm -hmm. So if they're townhouses, you know, they could be three two-story units. Yeah. So the, I mean, the configuration of it. Well, I thought the letter said five or six units in each building. It, it may have. It can't exceed six in a building, so whatever. Yeah. So what are you showing down there? So what I'm showing down there is there's a 22 building, so if you had three and four in each, then it would equate to 77. So these are going to be more or less garages? <clears throat> no, not in, well, no, this is just a conceptual layout, so. Because it does look a little crowded. Well, if, the, if it's two, if it's a two-story building and you have four units in each, you have two up and two down. It's a condo, no garage. But you don't show any parking down there. I do. There's a bunch of parking there. There's parking. So you have a main road coming in between the two rows, and then you have um, like a, a drive aisle to parking spaces behind it, and then there's on-road parking along the road coming in. You want me to bring it over there? No, I, I, we're a little ahead of ourselves. Yeah. yeah exactly. And it's in the, in the bottom, just so everybody can keep in mind, the bottom is not within our purview until uh, the yeah, town right, board, the town right, board, until the right. town board gives, right. you know, gives them the okay that they can move forward with a, that type of a plan. So right now it's a matter of us coming up with the actual number. So, as, you know, whether or not the number was 77 or 66 or whatever the case may be. That they, we, they could take that number to the town board and then go through the process with them, whether or not they would allow some type of you know clustered, um, cluster type development like that in the area. So going back to the bridge, all those other roads I presume would be public roads, often for public uh, dedication. Well, in, it, they don't have to be. So, in under the. Well, what, what's your proposal? My proposal is to eliminate this development entirely and build something no, like that. What, if, if you had to build that, what would, what would your proposal be? I mean, it That's would what be. We're talking about. It would, it would be beneficial to us to have the town take it over. We'd build it to the town specs, and then the town okay. would. The indication is the town might not take over the bridge, so that would, that section would be a private road. But when you're looking at, right, in that scenario, sure. So we would also eliminate from a lot count, too, in that. Well, it'd make it make uh, more difficult to, it. to build on those lots. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If they proposed it as a private, private road and the town didn't take it over, the town really has no say in the matter, mm -hmm. then it falls back to, as, as, you know, as Malcolm said, it, it's dependent upon a, it's dependent upon an application for the wetland disturbance, right. you know or the temporary wetland disturbance to build the bridge. But then again, going yeah. back to the section of the code, at no point does it read that the town needs to commit to ownership of the road for the conceptual plan to develop the lot count. So what's everybody, um, all right. <laughs> I mean, we're really, we're really, you get two different numbers here. It's, I mean, that's what it's coming to with all the discussion we've had. I support 66. I'm at 66. I'm not, I'm not supportive of the bridge or the right. complications that come down the line with the, with it being a private road and, and, and it's just, uh, for me, I think 66 is the right number to go with. I agree. I'm also at 66 because I think it's got to get the lock count. It's got to be somewhat feasible. That's yeah. not even feasible. No, no, 66. Okay. Robert? I'll go with the flow. <laughs> I think that we're, I think that's what the number that we're looking at is 66. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. So, with the conception of this. So, at this point, I just formalize this in a uh, in a vote. Um, 
So with this, the we'll have to authorize the secretary to direct a letter to the, I guess, to the applicant and the uh, and the town board that the, we've done the review for the subdivision and we feel that 66 lots is is the, um, is the number that you know um, fits for what's being proposed. I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion today. It's my one. Make a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all for all working right. with Thank us you. on this. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Take care. You too. Okay. Okay, our next item on the agenda is the site plan and special use permit for Downey Energy liquid propane storage. Good evening. Good evening. You have me tonight instead of Mr. Lynch. So be thankful. Should we tell him okay. So I guess at this point, it looks like <laughs> it's like we're back to we're back yes. to the table again with this. Well, the DEIS was submitted back in September, right? At the request yeah, of the there was a lot of there was things going on outside of this room uh, that I think that that stole things, and it wasn't on our part. I. Listen, I, I don't have the person that was, you know, that was dealing with that here tonight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were, this is what, this is where it went. So. That's fine. We when understand, we, we've gone and we've gotten to this point. We know now this is back. Yes. You know, that it's back in front of us again. You know, right. when right. we got the word after the last meeting, you know, we had discussed, you know, the decisions that were made, you know, outside of here. Um, in executive session with council, um, the planner was authorized to, you know, to make sure that he went back to this, um, you know, and did the review for completeness, and that document was produced. Yes, and there's no blame to be placed anywhere. We understand. So it's, here it's, we are tonight. Right. The DEIS was found to be incomplete. So, you know, um, I, I don't want to say I think we all agree to that, and it's going to be revised and updated and resubmitted. Yep. If that's the, uh, you know, that's the flavor of the board here to, to move this thing forward. Yes. Uh, uh, as mentioned in my letter, the uh, uh, stormwater management section yes. and the traffic section are still under review, but yes. I wanted to get something to your team as quickly as possible. Um, regarding the sections that were under my purview. That's fine, not a problem. And again, uh, uh, I mean, no disrespect against Malcolm here. Again, a lot of this went through before Malcolm, a lot of the review process for the site plan approval. And, yeah, and, and likewise, uh, 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 from our team as well. Uh, you know, we have information that perhaps didn't find its way into the DEIS, which we'll sit down with with uh, the people who are putting that together and hopefully you'll come up with a comprehensive uh, DEIS that will be acceptable and, you know, move, which, however you want to move it, you know. So, does anybody have any questions? It's unfortunate I don't have any material here. At some point in time, we have so many newbies here, nobody even knows half the board and some people over here may not even know what this is all about, except that, that old Downey. You know, no, know, but that's, well, like that's said, unfair. Is, yeah, you know? I mean, to bring everybody up to speed, to be honest, is almost like having a, a separate meeting. It might be just for that in itself. Well, we don't mind. If you want to have a separate meeting, we can explain where we are and where we're going and where we've been. Yeah. Uh, and people can make their own decisions. And that might be some, we might have to, we might have to do that. We might have to just have a workshop. Um, type session you know, with everybody involved and uh, get, you know put it all out on the table here so that this it is just, well sure. there's three of the four here tonight but sure. there's four new members sure um, you know they probably you know probably need to hear everything and then at the same time um, you know bring them up to speed and then it's you guys are working on the DEIS and maybe maybe we can do that I'll be glad to come and Okay. Do whatever we need to do. 
All right. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, let the record reflect that I received correspondence today dated March 4, 2024 from Mr. Lynch, the attorney for the applicant. He asked that that item be placed into the record. Uh, I'd have, I would recommend that the uh, board accept that into the record. Okay. All right. We should do that as a form of motion. Accept That's fine. it. You, yeah. You, you, huh? you don't need a motion. Don't need a motion. Okay. But as long as it's put into the minutes, we're, we're yes, covered. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, so with that, if any, I don't know if anybody, any, anybody's looked at this, but does anybody have any particular questions right now regarding I this? I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if anybody's. We don't have a, new members don't have any papers. You don't have any plans. No. No. Yeah, that's we have. All we have. Okay. All right. So with that, we'll have to work on getting them, getting them information. Um, Again, you had to be willing to formally, informally, however you wanted to do it, just to take them through the process where we were and where we are today. And uh, yeah. and you obviously yeah. correct you, me um, if I go astray, but just to, uh, you know, yeah. educate everybody. Well, I think at this point, I mean, I think everybody probably um, probably needs, well, I don't know if everybody, you guys don't need this. You got all the plans, right? Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so if, if you were, would you be able to provide us four sets of the, you know, the, the past proposal? Sure. Or the most recent proposal that was made? Sure. So, uh, again, to, to, to clarify and not let this thing go on forever, you have a complete set of plans for the almost approved above ground tanks. You do not have a complete set, I don't believe. With you them. only have a site plan reflecting the buried tanks. Right. So, and we can get you all of that information 100%. Okay, yeah. And whatever I mean, other again, documentation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and again, there's, I know there's a lot more to this because it's, you know, it's not just the site plan. Sure. As much as there's other things that I think that we're gonna have to, you know, that they might have to provide for them is this is all tied into a local law. Mm -hmm. Which you know affects, you know, I think two zoning districts, mm -hmm. uh, not just this one, but I believe it's also the uh, airport industrial district as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So that 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 was yeah. your call, the the, huh? the airport district. That wasn't our call. So I it got wasn't thrown. my call. It wasn't my call either. So. Not you, but I'm I'm right. just saying it was yeah, the town's that was call. Another, that was another entity. Yes. Yes, other than this board. Could have been but, simplified. But, the, but, but I think it just helps that the, the newer members can read sure. the, um, um, the documentation that was provided to us by the town board, um, because again, this is, this is all contingent upon a, um, the passing of a local law at the town board level. Okay, so that's just something you gotta keep in mind. So it's not like, I know that, you know, previously there was mention that this has already been approved, it's already filed in Albany, and. You know, it's half the story. So, mm. but there's still the process in going through this with the, the um, you know, the environmental review and providing an EIS at the end of the day um, that needs to be done prior to the town board taking action on this local law. So we're moving in that direction, and that's where we go. We'll get everybody up to speed, and um, we'll reach out to you. Um, you know, in the future, if we decide to do that, have a sure. workshop meeting. I'll leave that up to you. Meanwhile, we'll work on the DEIS and resubmit that. Hopefully, we're closer to uh, getting to that point. But I welcome uh, to, again, meet with whoever to, to, to bring everybody up to snuff. Okay. Okay? Cool. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. So. With that, we go on to our conceptual reviews, um, which we have one tonight. Um, there will be conceptual review for North Chelsea LLC Ground Mounted Community Solar Farm. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Gordon. I'm with Carson Power, uh, representing the North Chelsea Solar Farm. I do not have a board, but I have a few extra printouts if anybody needs one. I think we did send some in ahead of the meeting. Okay. Sure. I think uh, uh, you guys have. Uh... Oh, wait. No, I have it. Come on. Okay. This is what you're talking about. Right? Yeah. There's a bigger one. I can pass out of here. This is what you're talking about. That's it. Yeah. So if anybody wants a larger printout, yeah. he's around. If not, everybody's got it. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Uh, so this is a, a five megawatt AC uh, fixed tilt ground mount community solar project. The proposed parcel is uh, 30 Duck Pond Road, which is off of Stony Kill Road. Um, it's a pretty interesting uh, location for this project. There's actually an adjacent um, existing community solar farm. I believe it's uh, Route 90 Solar, which is owned and operated by Nexamp. Uh, Nexamp is actually a, a partner of Carson Powers and a development partner. Um, so we have an agreement with Nexamp where we would actually be able to access this parcel through the existing access road, um, existing through the, the Route 9D project, which you can see in the top left corner of the, the concept map. Um, the point of interconnection for the facility would be adjacent to where the, the existing project interconnects as well, um, which is a 34-5 KV line that runs um, kind of northeast, southwest through that transmission corridor right there. Um, so it's a, it's a good parcel for this. There would be zero view shed access, a lot of existing infrastructure, really good infra- grid infrastructure for where this is located. Um, site is, is a little bit undulated, but, but not too bad. Um, all constructible for fixed tilt solar. Um, we'd make sure to include a, an Alta with, with full topography with our full application submission so that could be reviewed. Uh, the, the biggest challenge with this site is there are wetlands in this area, um, which is, explains kind of the, the funny shape of the existing uh, solar project in the, in the northwest that's operated by Nexamp, and then also kind of the funny shape that's proposed for our project. So um, the proposal we have here does include uh, some paneling within the wetland buffer area, and where you see the uh, where it says point of interconnection, you can see where the the new access road would connect from uh, the existing access road to the new project. There is a very small, I think it's actually uh, considered a stream that we would have to cross that would be uh, constructed with a, a relatively small culvert. Um, so that would be the only direct impact to wetland. Um, and then we, we would be looking for a wetland disturbance permit to include some paneling in the buffer area as well, um, which is necessary here due to the, the somewhat odd shape of the, the high and dry spots. Um, uh, the last interesting bit on the wetlands, um, we have completed a full delineation, so that'll be available with our full submission. Um, the DEC did go out and conclude a site walk. They are not taking jurisdiction of the large wetland bodies on site, so there'll be Army Corps jurisdictional, um, which is a bit more workable for us. Um, and uh, happy to answer any and all questions on the concept plan. Um, there looks like there's uh, quite a bit of floodplain on the property that would conflict with, um, I guess, some of your infrastructure, road and solar panel. How, how do you think that that would fare with, I mean, it's not a house, so that's mm-hmm. good, but has that been factored into um, your plans? Yeah, so, so floodplain's okay for us. It's, it's constructible and financeable. Um, we need to make sure that our inverter pads are out of the floodplain or elevated to a point above the 100-year watermark. Um, that's our design consideration, but the, the panels are elevated on a steel pile and it, it's okay to be on a floodplain. That, that's insurable and financeable. Uh, but we would be, I think we are gonna need to, to discuss um, a floodplain permit uh, from the town of Wappinger. Um, that's something else I'd appreciate some, some feedback on. I think it is a, um, that might be issued by the zoning administrator or is that something that, that comes directly from the planning board as well? Yeah. Building department? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, and what's the, I guess, estimated or, or maybe calculated uh, acreage of tree clearing? So the, the entire property is, is covered in trees today. Um, you know what the state of them, I guess, like the approximate age or the maturity of that forest is? No, I, I do not. I think we could provide a rough gauge of that. Uh, I, I believe the landowner might have done some selective clearing recently, but I'm not 100% sure. That's something we can definitely include in our, in our application materials. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is about 26 acres of panel area, or within the fence, so that would be about 26 acres of, of tree clearing. Okay. So I'm looking at clearing 26 acres? Oh, no, wouldn't that? 26 acres of panel, and you're going to clear more than that. A little bit Plus more road, probably. Yeah, that, that's yeah. right. It'd probably be a bit more. 
So uh, out of the overall project, what's the percentage of panels and stuff that's going to extend into the wetland buffer? Uh, I don't have the percentage of the entire site. I, I guess maybe... How many panels total are is it? Do you have that planned? You'd have that planned out already. Right? No, i got to do the mental math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 5 megawatts AC, so it'd probably be 10,000 panels. And you don't know how, how many of those panels would be in that buffer zone? My, my rough guess looking at this would maybe be 20%. A bit more. Excuse me. But that, that, that's a rough estimate from, from eyeballing it. Um, that's something else we can include in the, the full application. Can you show me uh, from, your, from this plan where the, the main roads are? Yes, this is a bit too zoomed in. So if you. Um, you're asking where the name is? Yeah, 9D. Because it says it's not going to be visible. Right. Yeah. So where are the roads? Yeah, I'll show you that. Here's the map. I can show you. Oh, okay. Here, so this, see this row of houses oh, that's here? that's much better. So this is the property. This oh, is yeah. the existing solar farm. Mm -hmm. And it accesses Here's another copy. Here's another copy. So that's. So it's set back pretty far. From that's 21 burgers there, right? Looks like this. That's 90, and that's not this. That, that, that's 90. 90 runs. So this is yeah, this is where you take uh, the Stony, same as this. Stony end. Kill Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they're looking at this area right in here, right? So, oh, there are some houses along Stony Kill Road. Yeah. yeah you got sure. all these homes right here. Mm -hmm. So would they be? Is, it, is this visible from all these homes? Twenty-one percent. Yeah. These yeah. homes over here. Absolutely. Would they be visible? <laughs> Down. Why? It, this is this is where the forest is going to remain. It's going to remain forest. No, that's yeah, where everything below this transmission oh. corridor we're not including a project. And there is road frontage here to Stony Kill, so but what's nice here is we can use this ex existing road coming through that project that's already constructed, where is the and then come back. And this is really good. You can see this kind of high and dry shape is in between the wetlands. Way? That's what it looks like. Yeah, because they go out. So it's a bit tough to get to, but it's a good, it's a good area. Yeah, this is the one that's like um, 21 burgers is down here, kind of. This is the one you can't really see it from 90. It's it's back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the landowner there? Or is that is that yeah. part of that? Um, that's a different landowner. It's a different. Yeah. It's a different property there. So this I guy believe his his house is over. So he'll, down in here. he'll you'll you'll be digging it up in his back. Yeah, there's been concerns about this wet stuff with other projects too that didn't go in there because of that. Yeah, I remember. Long time ago. Can I just get some understanding? Because obviously I wasn't here for the first projects. You said that you have a connection with that company? There's a relationship? Yeah, it, it, this is actually a, a co-development, so they'll the, also be the operator of this one as well. So is this property here also going to be future involved in that co-development? Are you going to end up tying in here one day too? So we actually have spoken to this landowner. They're not interested. Okay. So Any other landowners interested that you already spoke to? We've spoken to everybody um, about the project. Uh, these folks and these folks considered it were not interested. And these folks were not interested either. And so these may were? Uh, these, I think these two parcels are all the same landowner. I think it's the chilies that were not interested, and we couldn't get down here. Okay. Uh, so you have no other interested parties along this line that would make this project even bigger in the future? No, as of now, no. And we, we tried yeah. because the, the, this is an excellent transmission corridor for these types of projects. So we were given permission from the utility for 8 megawatts, but we're only going to have a little safety for 5. Um, so it'll be, it'll be capped there. Now you guys lease the land for them? We're leasing this land. The other parcel is actually owned. Uh, my next amp, they purchased it, but the, the landowner for our parcel here is um, with the Winklevitz, mm -hmm. and it's a, a lease of the property. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just Anything else I can point out here? What do you think? I don't know. I just I don't I don't think a problem with all that wetland there. What was this? Solar panels in the wetland. Oh, no, no, well, I'm not going to just going in the buffer. So you're, gonna, get, you're not going to go the wetland. It's a buffer itself, right? Like you said, there's a reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I was trying to find out what the percentage was that was going within the buffer. So for roughly 20% in the buffer. Yeah. Which is probably most of the other here now. 
down here. Yeah, well, actually, it's all the stuff in here within this. Up, up, up. Okay. This white dotted, these yeah. white dotted lines. I'm still learning about the solar yeah. world the, here. Yeah. Um, this is a system that doesn't have any that's the, that's power shown. banks or anything like that. Long, that would so require yeah. water yeah. to be yeah. cooled. Yeah. No, 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 no water yeah. cooling. If anything, yeah. there's there's yeah. fans yeah. on the inverters. We use a specific type of inverter, um, which we we likely would not. Area in which it's yeah. It's so there, there's no there's no backers. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. That's an important piece of the puzzle for us. Okay, okay. Pretty sure no battery storage. I'm checking the site plan. Partial access. Pretty sure pretty clear. If that's a strong preference from the board, then we're happy to forego the battery storage. Is it code, right? Yeah, Baisley, Mo. Is it code? I'm good. I'm not too familiar with them, but I don't think in the solar fields they have the batteries. You can add batteries. I think there actually is a battery that was added to the the Nexam project um, a few years ago. Uh, but I don't believe we have that included on our proposal today. Okay. You're talking about that existing? The exi there, yeah, the existing project. If yeah, there is, batteries. there's got to be. I think no, they, they didn't have batteries yeah. there yet, did they? So you're, uh, so in, and also, they too, is your proposal. They didn't have batteries. But you just said that they were. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a one, one, one conversation here. What, what is it you're bringing up? He said they may have put batteries in the, in the other one that's existing. The other I know they, they have tied for it. Yeah, they proposed the there. batteries to go in there, but they yeah, didn't. Yeah. As far as I know. Yeah, they backed, they pulled that off the table. Sure. And yeah, it, it, it's. Um, I don't believe we have batteries currently included on this, and we're happy to forego that. It's not a, a, a big deal. Yeah. I, I, I hate to be so direct on this question, but you said you had a partnership with them. Do you, do you not know that project? Have you not been, been to that current project at all lately? I personally have not driven back to that existing project. Um, but yeah, it, it, is, it is a partnership with Nexam. But we, we were not involved in the first project. We were driving the second project. But the, guys, do we have one meeting down here? Yeah, I mean, that's... No, one meeting. <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, any, any other questions I can answer on the... No, I, I think you also left out, too, is there is a wetland area that you are going to kind of cover over completely. The, also, it's shown on here, there's a 0.2 acre wetland. Yes, which I, which I wish so was a little go. bit so more. It's not, just a, it's not just encroaching a buffer. It's also going to be a wetland, yeah, taking out part of the wetland area, too. That, that, that's correct. And then the, the other area where there will be uh, some minor wetland disturbance would be where the point of interconnection where that access road crosses the transmission corridor. Right. There, there is wetland that runs through that. Through there, too. Yeah, we'll pick the, the thinnest spot to, to, to cross. Yeah, I mean, you could come up with like an alternate plan too that doesn't touch any of that stuff that leaves it alone, and see what you can get out of that. But yeah, yeah. we're not generally not a fan of messing with the wetlands, especially with yeah. something like that, a project like that, especially. But yeah, we're trying to protect the wetlands. Yeah, just come up with an alternate plan, maybe what you could fit in there without disturbing any of that stuff. I think there there won't be any option um, just to get back to this part of the property without some sort of minor wetland disturbance for the access road. Mm -hmm. um, I believe there, there has been uh, some approved wetland disturbance for other solar projects that have been approved. Um, obviously, we, we have a little bit of flexibility here. It is a, a pretty odd-shaped parcel, mm -hmm. so we're tight on space, and we, we will definitely need to, to go into the buffer to some extent. But. Mm -hmm. uh, well, like I said, the other options are acquire more property back there or downsize the project so it doesn't encroach. Right. Yeah. Well, to eliminate. reduce the disturbance. To re eliminate yeah. the disturbance. It's eliminating, right. Eliminating. Well, okay. no. well, you're also eliminating a small wetland area as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. and again, that would have to be, even to get that far, you'd have to do an analysis, mm -hmm. you know, to find out if that was actually what the functionality is of that wetland. Yeah, you know, to see if it, you know, how that's going to be affected, or are you proposing some type of mitigation? But you know, you, you've pretty much eaten up all the pro all the good property out of it, so you really couldn't, you know, kind of if you were getting rid of one well, then you'd have to kind of add it to another. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's not like you, you have that ability because you're kind of using up all the pieces you can here. So we, we, we have completed a, a well and delineation, um, which we'll submit with the full application, which will be a bit, a lot more specific about right. um, 
what what exactly the, the use of each is. Um, yeah. For for previous uh, wetland disturbance permits that the, the planning board has issued, what what has been other mitigation uh, that other developers have have deployed where they've impacted wetland uh, directly and, and buffer area? I mean, I mean, we discouraged. I mean, we've discouraged in the past, you know, being in the wetland itself, you know. But I mean, it, there is. Um, yeah, I believe there is still provision that they can they can you know create new wetland area to mitigate what you're taking out. So they would you would have to look at that as well. So you create a new well you know create you know one for one um, replacement. Mm -hmm. So you could you know add it on to one of the adjacent areas I guess and you know it'd be that much so you'd be losing panels in that location. You know, to gain panels in this location. So, I mean, it's almost like you're swapping, which, you know, you might not be able to, you, know, you have to do the number, you have to look at it to see if it's going to work. Did the, um, the, the, the Myers project do that type of mitigation as well? But that was a solar project that was approved yeah. last year, right? And I don't think they, I, I know they, they, I know they, um, they did go into the buffer in some, in some of that, I just don't remember how much. It was also a farm field. It wasn't. Right. It was, it was agricultural land. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was a but different. It was an agricultural tags project. Okay. Yeah. What um, did they do? Sheep grazing or? Um, uh, no, they're they growing. Uh, no, they a lot with their those hay fields. I thought. <laughs> No, they no, were they're growing. Well, I guess with the agricultural tags program, I don't know what they had grown there previously, but with the agricultural tags program, they were looking at like berries, strawberries, things that would do well in partial shade. Sure. But it was it was it was an agricultural field that was home to solar panels. So I think we, we can absolutely it's not finished. It's not been consumed. No, I remember. I, I remember. Mm -hmm. We we can absolutely do something similar here with agrivoltaics. We have a few different options. We could deploy obviously it's not currently in agriculture if that if that's viewed as some sort of mitigation for the the impact we might have on, on wetland buffer. Um, at a minimum, is that is that of interest? To the well, it board? wasn't. Uh, it wasn't being proposed as a mitigation measure. The yeah, wetlands that was in just, farm yeah. fields are treated differently in the town yeah. code as far as sure. wetlands. Sure. Um, yeah, there was no. They didn't touch the wetland in, in that other one. No, they did no, not. That touch was the off wetland. to the side. And was, stayed, they left it. They wood stayed. Wood and yeah. Yeah. There yeah, was stayed, some stayed. disturbance in the wetland buffer, but it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't touch they the wetland. Yeah, I remember. The way it's. The way they lay out on this property makes it very difficult to do the project you yeah. want to do. The way these wetlands lay on here. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, a tough shape. It's uh, not not the perfect square rectangle that we would prefer by, by any yeah. means. Um, the way the wetlands sit, even though it is an odd uh, parcel, I think the way they sit in there makes it very difficult for what you're attempting here. Mm -hmm. Um, so on, on the, the wetland disturbance itself, I think the, the, the small 0.2 acre wetland, um, I'm sure we could sharpen the pencil and, and find a way to avoid that spot altogether. Um, the area that would be unavoidable would be the, the by the point of interconnection where the access road crosses, that, that will require a culvert. It would be incredibly minimal, like less than a tenth of an acre or something. Typically uh, when we look at wetland disturbance, that's the acceptable so form, yeah. right? Yeah. If the only way to access this area is by building a bridge over a wetland, then we look at that wetland disturbance and mitigation for that wetland disturbance. Got it. I guess what, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm most concerned about is the regular intrusion into the buffer. Right, as you as you work away, work along the larger wetlands on the site, um, it looks like the wetland buffer is being intruded into consistently Pretty along much. the whole length of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that would do to your financials if 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 the board's response was, you know, you can disturb the wetland to get into the site to build this bridge, mm -hmm. but we don't want you to make a habit of disturbing the wetland buffer across this, what is it, 26 acre site? Correct. Yeah, it's um, almost the whole site there up the it's, corner. It's regular yeah. disturbance into the wetland buffer. Sure. Which, um, I think might 
have implications to the number of solar panels that you'll we'll be able to get and whether or not the finance right. work out. Well, this is what sure. we're we'll 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 spot on. I think we, um, and then this one, one, there, there's so no so doubt we'll have to right. impact yeah. the buffer in, yeah, in, this in is some the, form or, or yeah. it would not be financeable. There's just no way. Um, yeah. I think what the map. Well, there looks to be that there is some precedent for crossing. paneling and buffer area on, on previous projects. Yes. Obviously, we have some flexibility, but I'd love yeah. to understand yeah. Um, yeah. what what level of impact in the buffer area will be acceptable or tolerable yeah. to the planning board. Um, <coughs> I think I think that a certain amount of that would come from the wetland report and and the state of the site as it currently exists. The last. The last wetland, uh, I guess the last time we had a solar project, a solar farm that was looking to make disturbance to the wetland buffer mm -hmm. and to clear trees in the wetland buffer, mm -hmm. it was uh, an agricultural field and the trees that were being cut down were five-year-old weed trees in what was otherwise an agricultural field. And that is weighed very differently than like the, the clear cutting of the mature, mature forest, forest yeah, in right a wetland area that is surrounded by floodplain. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that would have a, a very different impact to those wetlands um, than the last solar project that we reviewed. I, I don't know, the last solar project that we reviewed was the first solar project, the so first solar farm project that I reviewed on your behalf. So that's all I have. To yeah, that's just to. a bad spot. And that, unless you, yeah, not you know, knock out 30% right? of your panels no. yeah. to stay out of those areas. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it, just, it looks like it's one of those where you're, yeah, you'd have to take some type of reduction to make this work. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, unless you can figure out another way to lay it out. But I, you know, with the wetlands and the, I mean, the flood area might not be a big issue because you know, flood area as long as you're elevated right. and you're, right. you know, you're putting small stanchions within the flood zone, it's not going to be an issue there. Because then the water can still go up and down without, you know, without impeding the flow of water in a flooding situation. Um, but you know, putting it into the, um, you know, going into, you know, cutting into the buffer as much as you are with panels. And then again, I guess that has to do too with, you know, if what would the report, I guess, or what would the effect be if you cut down all these trees? How would that affect the wetland area? I guess that's at the end of the day. Just right. Uh, Just it's, right. Um, you know, it's, I think that's what we're we're trying to. Right. And you haven't done any real research. Just had it marked out, right? So you haven't. Has anybody done an analysis for this? We, we've done a full well in delineation. The full. Okay. Yep. Yes, we've had a biologist on site mark out uh, the exact boundary of the wetland and prepare a report. So, he, but he just marked out the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's correct. Uh, so what we've been discussing is the question of access. Um, I'll need to do a little bit more research into it, particularly if you come in as an application. Mm -hmm. um, the site is largely landlocked. You do have uh, a flagpole that looks, uh, you know, I'm assuming it's 50 feet across. It might be wider than that. It might be 100 feet across, but nothing would have been. This lot would not have been subdivided this way if that flagpole was less than 50 feet because it wouldn't constitute access. Um, but due to the geography of the site and the existing infrastructure on the adjacent <laughs> property, they're not proposing access across this site's frontage. They're proposing access through a neighboring site. Right. Given the development of the neighboring site, I think that makes a certain amount of sense, but I will want to do research into the code as to whether or not that fits with the code. Uh, and whether or not that, you know, access through the neighboring solar farm would need some kind of. Uh, and you're talking about the flagpole. You're talking about the one that's off of Stony Kill. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's, so that's the, the second. Access. Yeah, the second that's one. That's the frontage. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. The the frontage off Stony Kill that those wetlands are substantially larger. Mm -hmm. uh, so either if we access from Stony Kill or we access from the the Route Nine D project. Either way, it's unavoidable to have to cross some form of wetland to get back there. Uh, the impact is substantially, substantially less to go through the other project. Yeah. And 
the infrastructure is there. Pay for much less of a road in order to, you know, Let, less road, existing curb cut. Yeah, yes. it, it's a nice, um, it's a nice less tree clearing in order to get to where you want. I, I, it makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. It's just when the application comes before the board, I want to do research <coughs> to the question of access. Sure. Um, but that is, yeah, that's what we've been discussing. Okay. So. Okay. Um, we we talked a bit about. Um, the quality and maturity of the trees, and that's something we'll definitely take a look at. Is there a specific metric the board is looking for to define what, what is okay for, for clearing or, or not okay for so clearing? So what we would evaluate, uh, we would weigh the impact that you're proposing with the, the functionality of the wetlands, um, which would be described in, I don't know who flagged the wetlands, but, or when they were flagged, but uh, that usually comes with a delineation and functionality report. Mm -hmm. um, and we would review that, we would look at the quality of those wetlands, what their functionality is, uh, the existing conditions on the site, the overall environmental impact to them that's being proposed. So if we, it sounds like what, what uh, if we were to uh, have success with a, wet, a wetland disturbance permit in the buffer area, uh, to any extent, we would need to clearly demonstrate that whatever our use is of the buffer area is not having any negative impact on the wetland itself. Yes. That would have to be, a, yeah, that would, uh, yeah. And, and also address the area, the, wet, the wetland area that's gonna be removed. Sure. Yeah, and whether, you know, whether there's the ability to mitigate, um, you know, to relocate that somewhere else, you know, add it on to an existing or um, you know, plus I guess that would also fall into that report whether or not it's functioning or not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, just think it's just you know, there's a lot of lot of encroachment. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of into the buffer areas as opposed to other projects that we've looked at in the past. Sure. Yeah. I don't. I, don't, I mean, I'm just saying. I don't think a lot of us would really favor. Mowing down a forest and a wetland to put solar panels up. I am I don't agree with you. I agree. Yeah. I think it's somewhat counterproductive. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You're not currently clearing trees right now. No. Okay. No, no, no. What was selectively cleared? You said some sections were selectively cleared recently. Yeah, I believe so. I I can see if the, the landowner has a record and then we can I would think so. Yeah. <clears throat> they already cleared some of this property. I think that the, the, the landowner has has been doing selective logging on it, which okay. is different yeah. than yeah yeah no because the yeah. land is yeah. they're going to lease it yeah yeah right, right, right. So they're taking out some of the better trees that are marketable yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have any yeah. context on yeah, when or yeah. what or no. That's something that yeah, that's uh, I believe I believe the town does have a provision for that as well. I think they need a, a foresting permit. I think for that. Yeah. 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 Depending on what's coming, how much. So that's something you could recommend the homeowner to check in with us. I understand. Thank you. I understand. Um, and then the the last thing here was just on that point on the timber harvesting permit. Uh, does that go through the, the planning board typically or the building department as well? What was the question? Uh, the, the retreat clearing. Building department. Yeah. That would be going through us. What? Yeah. So you, I mean. We're getting two different. I mean, you're not, you're not asking for a, for a permission to cut all the trees down right now. No, no, no. In oh, I was going to say, because you're nowhere near us giving you that approval. Right. I'm nowhere you got to get, you no, got to make a full submission. All right. Touching the trees. Yeah, it's because yeah. we're getting in near the March 31st deadline. Yeah. The, we're, yeah, you're we're, saying we're well, the owner to yeah. get his permission to do what he's doing. No, I'm, I'm uh, for, for no. The, the solar okay. project application okay. so that whenever the, the project reaches uh, yeah. an approval. What what there would need to be an approval for the for the tree clearing as well. Gotcha. Uh, so if that's something that should be included with that, that would be part yeah. of your special permit and site plan. Perfect. That's yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I, I I greatly appreciate the feedback. Okay. Thanks. All right. So yeah, so go do your homework and I guess you know take a look at all the you know that'll be your choice where you decide to go from there. Do you think the uh, the most appropriate next step here would be? Uh, Another conceptual review with a revised plan. I mean, I think that we have 
if you want to change, if you want to, if you're, if you're planning on changing this and kind of laying it out, you know, you want to do something with layout changes and kind of make it, you know, look a little different and maybe give us another plan. It's just a little more, you know, a little more clearer too, showing mm -hmm. everything. Um, we can do it again as a conceptual, you know, just to save you from putting everything in for a full submission. Sure. And then we could have those that we could have that discussion at that point in time. You know, we'll give you the feedback, and then it's up to you where you decide to go after that. Okay. So, okay. Yep. So I'll, we'll leave it at that, and that might be the the least, you know, the least expensive route for you at this point. Sure. I, I appreciate but, it. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. So, with that. And that one, we have a, um, looks like we have one extension we need to discuss. Um, Didn't we do that earlier? Huh? Did we do that earlier? No, we did the other one. It was no. two for tonight. So we um, uh, yeah, we yeah. did the one for, with uh, Kimmel, which was with Mike Bodendorf and for, yep. um, and now we have Riverview Land Company, LLC, um, which had an amended site plan, which is the lumber yard down in Chelsea by the river. Um, they're looking to extend a site plan approval for a year on um, the construction of, um, I believe that was two buildings down there. Yeah. So I make a motion to uh, second uh, that extension. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, so at the end of the meeting here, um, Is there anything that we need to, anything anybody wants to discuss um, at this point in time? No. I think so. Okay. Um, I would like to, I would, I would like to go on executive session real quick to discuss um, yeah. the personnel matter. Mm -hmm. um, so if we, somebody wants to make a motion to do that. I'll move that. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we just adjourn the meeting first? And then we don't have to come back? No. No. No, the meeting has no. to, the meeting has to keep going. Yeah. Can you want to record after? Should we have it all in person's No. No, because he'll probably just end the meeting right when we're done, so I don't think there's any need. Yeah, I think we, uh, he doesn't have to continue recording up. I think at the end of this is going to be a, uh, just have a real quick discussion with the board members. And then um, at the end of, um, at the end of that, we'll probably, there's probably going to be no vote. So, um, so with that, um, entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Okay, motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 